into the Cougar Tailgate, where BYU fandom lives. Here's your host, Lauren McClain. What's up, Cougar Nation? Lauren McLean here, and we're doing what we do best, talking all things BYU Cougars. Here's what's going up on the show today. BYU's Deputy Athletic Director Brian Santiago joins us to tell us what life will be like once BYU joins the P5s and what these last two years were like since the announcement first came. But first, the athletic department is throwing a party, the big party, in fact, on July 1st, in honor of BYU officially becoming part of the Big 12. Joining us now to tell us all about how he's going to spoil us as fans is BYU's Associate Athletic Director of External Operations, David Almodova. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Glad to be here, Lauren. Thanks for having me. You played in the BYU golf tournament on Monday, I believe. Uh, how was your golf game? Our team had a lot of fun. And... <laughs> That's most important when you play golf, but we actually did pretty good. We were, we kind of finished middle of the pack. Okay. We had a great time and it was awesome. When you start off by saying we had fun, that probably means you didn't golf very well. (laughs) But that's the thing is we had a lot of fun and we actually played, we played better than expected. How's that? Okay. I like that. I'm okay with that. Who would you say was the best golfer at that tournament? Oh gosh. I know that. Kalani's group uh, played really well. Obviously, he had Fessy Sataki on his team, and Fessy's a really good golfer. Oh, I didn't know so that. So they did well. Um, I, I didn't see all the scores, but I know that that group did well. But I know that in our group uh, was Tyson Hutchins, Stuart Collin, Anna Metcalf. And Tyson actually drove a par four green, which for us was awesome. So, Whoa. Hey, yeah. that's big time right there. That is. All right, David, BYU will officially be in the Big 12 on Saturday, July 1st. In September of 2021, it was announced the Cougars would be joining the Big 12 this summer. It's flown by to me, and I can't believe we're already here. There's been a ton going on this week leading up to it, but what's this whole process been like for you specifically? Yeah, so about, gosh, I would say last fall, kind of right around when football started, we started talking about this summer and July 1. And for us, our goal was – We just want to connect and engage with Cougar Nation. And how will we do that come July 1? And so it's something that we've worked on kind of throughout the year. And we kind of just felt like, let's do a week-long connectivity with with our fan base uh, to have different events and different touch points. So that's something that happened really, really fast because during this past year, obviously our our employees have sport responsibilities. So not only Mm -hmm. covering their sports and what they do, also trying to plan this big week and so again yeah our goal is just to have touch points with our fans throughout the week and celebrate obviously getting ready for july 1 and it's been awesome it's been chaotic and crazy and wild a lot (laughs) of moving parts a lot of things that we've learned along the way um but it's been awesome Mm -hmm. and really looking forward to tomorrow night's countdown craziness out here at the sab practice fields and then leading to saturday's uh big big party and hopefully cougar nation will come out you're over marketing fan experience and creative solutions i feel like us as fans all these things you're talking about we can just show up and we're like this is great but how much work goes into something like this behind the scenes that normal byu fans like us don't get to see yeah so probably like again conversation started last fall and this winter mostly around january is when we really started diving into it um communication staff or social team, creative, graphic design, video, or marketing fan experience team, just trying to put together a plan and hopefully that that plan could come to, you know, fruition, which we've seen part of it this past week and continuing on. And so a lot of work, a lot of collaboration between multiple um, departments, um, and then kind of leaning into kind of Provo city and meeting with the mayor's office oh, wow. and trying to catch their vision and what they were hoping to accomplish during this time. And so we kind of went down a path that we've never really dipped into uh, working with political leaders and um, a lot of great people throughout Provo city and the state of Utah and people up on campus. And so it's kind of been this massive operation that we've had a lot of people involved Um and if I can share this kind of a cool thing today, uh, we're taking Tom home up to the Capitol building as Governor wow. Cox is declaring that Saturday, July 1 will be BYU Big 12 day for the state of Utah. 
Oh, so oh we're going <laughs> to we're going to go pick up that declaration and and have Tom up there and so looking forward to that today. Um a lot of moving parts, a lot of different little things that have come the big things and um we've learned a lot of things along the way. And so been awesome, been exciting. Grateful for everyone's part that's been a part of this um, and making everything happen. So you're going to see a lot of things taking place on our social platforms over the next two to three days. We've got some exciting content that's coming out um, from our social team. Um, yeah, it's been fun. It's been awesome. I love that you mentioned how many people you've been working with just across the state of Utah, because honestly, it's it's not just BYU specifically, but this is going to be a big day for the state of Utah. It's just an incredible thing joining the, the Power Fives. But I feel like with working with so many people, there has to be some obstacles. What's been the biggest obstacle that you've faced during this process? You know, some of our own <laughs> obstacles. <laughs> um, a lot of approvals and permits that we needed to have pulled for the weekend that maybe we weren't thinking about. Um, we do a lot for home football games and basketball games and other sports. And things that we wanted to implement for some of these events, we did not think about that we had to, to do. So kind of a lot of last minute, I'm um, hoping for approvals and working through whether it's Provo City Fire and Fire March on Campus and risk management. And what's been awesome though, is everyone's kind of bought into all of this. And so everyone's mm -hmm. working a little overtime to make sure that we can accomplish the vision of what we want to do. So it's been awesome to see everybody come together on this. David, once the sports actually start happening, how will your job and what you do shift going into the Big 12 compared to what you do now? Yeah, I think kind of the main message to our units have been, hey, we just need to step up our game. So let's be a little cleaner on details and let's, how do we enhance the experience even more? So whether it's adding more fireworks to events or more um, fan engagement and how do we incorporate, whether it's from a sponsorship side to activation side to on field, on court, how do we make it feel just a little different? And entertainment, you know, we want, you know, DJs and we want live bands and adding those. Um, we're going to add a new experience to, to football games days this year. So we've had Cougar Canyon for the last couple of years that mm -hmm. obviously runs adjacent to the stadium on the west side. Uh, this year, we're going to open up a new area over on Helaman Field, and we're going to call it the backyard at Cougar Canyon. And so we'll have more fan interaction activation areas on that field on game days as well. So that'll be exciting. So is that going to be kind of like a, a tailgating experience back there? or what, What's that specifically going to be like? We will have a tailgating opportunity for fans to, to purchase their own experience and how they want to experience a tailgate. Um, and then we're going to have – just more fan interactive sponsorship activation areas out on the grass area there at Helaman. So maybe a lot more skills and different types of experiences there. Part of our Cougar Club will have an area there to host a lot of Cougar Club members. Um, so basically taking that whole field and adding more, trying to just build our footprint. Obviously, we're going to have more people coming to the stadium, more visiting fans coming. So just giving people more of a space to come and enjoy our game day experience. I can't imagine what this first season is going to be like, specifically with football. It's just going to be nuts. Your job's going to be crazy. But but let's talk about this week and last. You've mentioned it a little bit. You've had Cosmo in the Park, High Fitness at Miller Park, Movie Night, the Devotional on Sunday, the Big Countdown on Friday, and Big Party on Saturday. Which event that's happened or is going to happen gets you the most excited? You know, they've all been awesome in different ways. Um, I attended the High Fitness event as a spectator. I didn't participate. <laughs> I was going to say, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was cool. Like, I had never seen that up close. And, and I've heard a lot about it, but I've never seen it take place. And it was fun to see. We had over 600 participants show up wow. at Miller Park. And, you know, and obviously that, that setting in Miller Park with those beautiful mountains in the background. And, and so it was great for, for High Fitness to be a part and to partner with us on this. They want to do more events into the future here on campus. So great first event there. I thought the devotional was awesome. Um, our student athletes and obviously Coach Sataka did a great job. And movie night at the stadium was awesome. Um, this week, uh, we had gone and visited our corporate partners and some of our donors um, just to tell them thank you and to thank you for all that they do for us. 
Yesterday we did a campus blitz where we took a lot of our staff and some of our coaches and administrators and kind of went and hit every department on campus that touches athletics and delivered a bunch of swag. And again, just telling them, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. We feel like us, it's not just BYU athletics going to the big 12. It's everyone. It's everyone that's been a part of this journey with us, everyone that supported us. So we're just wanting to just go say thank you. Um, and we'll finish that off tonight with a lot of donor visits tonight. Uh, there's some corporate partner visits happening this morning. But then tomorrow night, yeah, we are doing an uh, internal athletic department uh, celebration just for our athletic department. And that's going to be a fun event in the evening. But really looking forward to the countdown show tomorrow night. Alema Harrington, Jerem Jordan, Spencer Linton are going to be co-hosting that. Um, we're going to have Greg Rebell kind of do a read uh, he's put together a poem that kind of covers the gamut of our <laughs> athletics history. So he's going to wow. read that tomorrow night at our countdown. We're going to have, obviously, a, we'll do an official countdown. Um, we have purchased some billboards in Times Square that we're going to be able to show tomorrow night as well. Um, at Times then, Square? Yep, yeah, yeah, in Times Square. So We're talking New York City, Times Square? New York City, countdown to the ball what? drop, right? So, wow. We've got that going on. Um, yeah, then obviously our countdown to midnight, we're going to shoot off fireworks. Uh, hopefully we're lighting the Y on the mountain, have have some music playing and some dancing for a little bit. But yeah, we hope Cougar Nation shows up for that. We have a lot of giveaways that we're giving out for fans to come and be a part of that. And so hopefully people will come out and, and enjoy it. And then, yeah, obviously looking forward to Saturday. Um, it's basically a Cougar kickoff for fans who have been to a Cougar kickoff. Mm-hmm. It's a Cougar kickoff on like triple steroids. <laughs> so we're bringing a lot of different elements and a lot of different interactive pieces. And so we're just, again, this is the, we haven't done this. Right. Yeah. And who knows? Right. And it's, and we just, it's like a basic, it's like a big BOU athletic celebration party. And so we're going all out for this. So a lot of people have been involved, a lot of people working hard behind the scenes and yeah, we're excited. And then everybody gets the week off next week. I was, Hey, I, that's what I was just going to ask you. You still have the Cougar kickoff on August 16th, right? Another Cougar yep. kickoff. But so you get a little break or vacation after this crazy week. Yeah. So everybody's going to take next week off. I've said this, take a week off, just get away, go decompress. Um, again, a lot of people working really hard, long hours, like a lot of long hours over the last handful of weeks, months, and it's all coming late, coming late until now. And we're excited. Super excited. Yeah. I think we're all running off adrenaline right now. <laughs> I'm sure. Then everyone can take a big, deep breath. It's it's obviously yeah. a big deal for BYU to be joining a P5, P5 conference, but David, is there anything you'll miss about the West Coast Conference or Independence? Sure. I think, you know, relationships that we've built with our school counterparts, um, those are deep. And we've met yeah. some great people along the way. And it's that's what's going to be sad. Hopefully, we can still have some competition with some of those schools. Um, we'll see what happens moving forward, but that'll probably be the biggest thing uh, that we miss is just those relationships that were built, and we're extremely, extremely grateful for the West Coast Conference. It allowed us a place to be for the last handful of years and to provide those experiences for our student athletes to compete and and to compete at a high level. I felt like the mm-hmm. conference as a whole had really stepped up and. It was a great conference for us for that time. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great journey, and and we're ready for a new one. We're here with BYU's Associate Athletic Director of External Operations, David Almadova. David, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time with me today. Absolutely, Lawrence. Great talking to you, and hope you're doing well. You're the best, David. Thank you so much. Thanks, y'all. Go Cougs. Coming up, Deputy Athletic Director Brian Santiago joins us to tell us all about his journey to the Big 12 and what's happening behind the scenes in the athletic department. This is Cougar Tailgate. Welcome back to Cougar Tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean. And joining us now is a guy who's had a front row seat to BYU's journey and uniting with the Big 12, BYU's Deputy Athletic Director, Brian Santiago. Brian, good to have you back on the show, my friend. Yeah, it's great to 
jump back on, Lauren, and always happy to talk about exciting things happening. Absolutely. We had you on the show almost exactly a year ago, and you were telling us about trying to figure out travel plans and a lot of logistics. Now that it's here, yeah. what's your life like? Uh, it's even better. Good. Because this, we're, we're getting closer to something that we've all been looking forward to and dreaming about for a long time. And uh, the fact that it's finally here and our teams are gearing up and our athletic department's gearing up and we've done an enormous amount of work preparing for it, uh, including those things that you're talking about with travel. We think we have some great partners and are ready to roll. And so we're really excited for, for what's to come and for the first official day that's coming up. BYU announced they were joining the Big 12 in September of 2021. Has it flown by for you? To now, or or can because you've had so much going on, has it gone by slowly? No, it's it's actually it's actually gone by pretty quickly. You know, you have that last year in the WCC. Your focus is on your teams and finishing strong and trying to win championships, and and uh, all of a sudden, you know, that last the track and field championships happened, and then you realize, hey, it's on. Mm. Uh, all of our teams are ready to go. And uh, it's, so it's gone, by, it's gone by relatively quickly as we've tried to transition out from the WCC. That's so cool. How would you describe what the process has been like in joining the Big 12 from behind the scenes and from your perspective? Lauren, it's actually been super exciting. Uh, preparing for something like this that is so invigorating. There's so many people that are passionate about our transition into the Big 12, uh, the competition for sure. But when you start looking at it from, from an internal perspective, there's so many logistical things that you have to work out. There's so many things that you have to do to invest in your department. You have to add, we've had to add quite a few number of new employees uh, to kind of strengthen uh, the force. We've, we're, ha we're having to really try to look at facility upgrades at uh, our venues, at our practice venues, uh, we've just had to take a look at everything, all from the perspective of the long play. How do we prepare for the long play in the Big 12, right? There's, yeah. There are things that you have to prepare for right away to get ready uh, for the transition, the immediate transition, but you have to do everything with the long play in mind because that's what's going to that's, that's give us sustainable success. You look at teams like Texas and Oklahoma and, and Baylor. Does it almost feel like – keeping up with the Joneses a little bit? Because you mentioned you, you have to get on top of things. You, you're talking about, you know, expanding facilities and things like that. Does it almost feel like, man, how are we ever going to catch up? You know, it's it's funny you say that. It reminds me when you say keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> the lost Dodds, who was a longtime AD at Texas, one time was in a press conference, and they uh, one of the media members asked him, uh, Delos, you know, one of your counterparts just built a new facility and did this and that. He said, are you trying to keep up with the Joneses? And the lost dog <laughs> grabbed his cowboy hat and looked at him and said, young man, we are the Joneses. <laughs> so in, in our case, Lauren, it's true. We're, we're, we're not the Joneses. <laughs> and, you know, you don't, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to set ourselves up for what's very best for BYU and not yeah. necessarily trying to match what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And, you know, we've done a great job at that. You start looking at our facilities, you look at the Marriott Center, you look at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, you look at uh, uh, Miller Field, you start looking at Robinson Track, you start looking around. We have facilities, mm -hmm. our soccer complex, that are really, really great facilities uh, for us moving into the future. Like we talked about with the long play, we're going to have to upgrade some things and make sure that it's uh, first class. You never want to. You never want to overdo it. I don't think that's who we are. I don't think that's our identity. What we want to do is just make sure that it's really nice and that it's inviting for the upcoming recruits and the student athletes that uh, and our coaches that do such a great job. So it's really just trying to do the right thing for BYU, try to make sure we stay in our space. We can't lose track of our identity, can't lose track of our culture, who we are. Uh, especially in this ever-changing world of college athletics with the collective and NIL. Mm, I love that perspective. I really do. And you, you've worked with so many teams from Power 5 conferences, especially with uh, independence and football. Now that you're a part of a Power 5 conference, how different is it from working 
with the West Coast Conference. Is there a big difference there? Yeah, there is. And I say that respectfully. The WCC has been a, a great partner, but it's it's a 100% different as far as the intensity and as far as the scope in working with the Big 12 Conference. They have so many resources to help us be successful. We can collaborate with so many schools for this coming year. We've got 13 additional schools that we can collaborate with that, and talk to and figure out best practices. But it's, it's yeah, it's very game changing. Uh, the intensity of working uh, with the Big 12 Conference office and uh, where we're going has been totally 100% different. Yeah, it's just big time now. And, and when BYU, when BYU was given the invite to the Big 12, and this may be a silly question, but maybe not, because BYU did have something going with independence and football and, and it kind of collaborated with BYU Broadcasting, but was there any hesitation at all when BYU was invited to the Big 12? Uh, no. Other than a quick glance to make sure that we had really heard correctly on the invitation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, there wasn't. But, but, Lauren, it's such a good question because I think it's important for people to understand that that's not a decision that's made at the athletic department level. It's not a decision, really, that's made only at the university level. That's a decision that's made uh, all the way up the ladder, making sure that we're aligned with the church, church leadership, mm -hmm. mm. Uh, the university, certainly, and then the athletic department. We have to make sure that we're 100% uh, aligned, that we understand the scope of what's happening. And once up and down the line, everybody was saying, hey, we're all in, let's go. Yeah. Uh, that was a really exciting, exciting thing to be able to, to uh, let the Big 12 know that we're that we're in, and that we accept the invitation, and that uh, and at that moment, you know, things changed. This is something that we've aspired for. We've wanted to be in the game. Our student athletes want to be in the game all across all sports. They want to play the best competition. They want to compete against the very best. And our student athletes and coaches deserve to be to be able to compete against the very best in the country. That's who. BYU is. We have, we have over 100 years of history to prove it. And some of the greatest athletes and coaches in the history of sport have come through BYU. And certainly this gives us a platform in the Big 12 to compete at the highest level across all sports, which is, if, you know, if you're going to play, why would you not want to be in the game? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Absolutely. Great. Brett Yormark is kind of an interesting commissioner. He's commissioner of the Big 12 because he's more about entertainment. He wants to he wants to fans to be entertained. How what's your relationship been like with him throughout this process? He's amazing. Love him. Love his energy. Love the way he thinks. He's super progressive. Had the chance to go back to the Big 12 basketball tournament this last year just to see it, feel it. Uh, be with the Big 12 staff, get an idea of how it works. You know, when you've been going to Vegas for 20-plus years in a row, you kind of know how things work in right. Vegas. We haven't been to Kansas City, so I went out there. Probably the highlight for me was walking around the arena with him during games and just listening to him talk about his vision of the future of the men's basketball tournament. He is just his mind, the way it works is different. Absolutely love working with him. He's got great energy, thinks outside of the box, is passionate about what he's doing and passionate about making sure that the world knows about the Big 12, about all the schools. And that's super exciting. You just want to be partners with the best. And I think this, Brett Yormark's got a little extra gear that we can all learn from. It, he just makes it feel like the sky's the limit for the Big 12. Anything's possible. And, and you mentioned, I mean, there are so many things to be excited about, better competition and uh, just uh, so many things, incredible opponents coming to play as part of a conference at Lavelle Edwards Stadium and in the Marriott Center. And what would you say you are most looking forward to personally about joining a Power 5 conference? Just the uh, collaboration with some of the best schools in the country, schools that there's already mutual respect uh, a conference and schools that respect BYU for who they are and who we are 
as a university and the church that we represent. Uh, that's that's got me super excited. It's also super exciting to uh, think about going into some of these venues. In football, we've had we've had the chance. We've been independent. We've played one of the tougher schedules in the country year after year. We've been all over the country. You see the maps of us back and forth across the country playing anyone, anywhere, and just looking for games. Uh, the Big 12 Conference brings some of the most storied universities and storied venues in every sport uh, to to the forefront. And our student athletes and coaches are going to have a chance, and Cougar Nation is going to have a chance to see some of the coolest places in, in collegiate athletics. I mean, think about Allen Fieldhouse at Kansas. Think about some of the baseball stadiums, uh, some of the best programs in the country. Uh, we're excited about the possibilities there uh, for our baseball program. You think about certainly all the basketball facilities, football, we've We've experienced a number of them, but I think that's what I'm excited about to to walk into those uh, venues with our coaches and student athletes and tie our shoes and and <laughs> lace it up and let's go I mean, just see where we're at. And I really believe that it's going to be, I think it's going to be one of the most exciting times in the history of BOE sports. And that's we had a bunch of student athletes come in for orientation. Uh, for Summer Bridge last week. And I, the only thing that came to my mind when I stood up in front of them is everybody get your surfboards out. The wave's <laughs> going to be unbelievable and we're going to ride it together. <laughs> and that's, I think, what I'm most excited about, just to just to play against the best, be with the best, be a part of a conference. The late season football games are going to be phenomenal. They're going to have so much meaning again. You know, it kind of flips the football seasons each year. It's kind of front loaded with all those best teams and you're just hoping that you can jump out to a great start. Now it kind of flips you. You have all those meaningful football games uh, in November uh, that are going to matter so much and that's going to be super fun as well. Is it satisfying at all knowing that BYU is now considered an equal with some of these power five teams where BYU always came in as kind of the underdog. They were, they were known as the underdog because they were independent. And then the West coast conference before that, I excuse me, the mountain West conference. Is there some satisfaction in saying, no, we're your equals. We are a part of this conference now. Yeah. You just, you know, we talked about it, Lauren. It's, it's super satisfying to be a part of a power five conference. You're yeah. in the conversation at all times. Your teams are in the conversation at all times, and you don't have to. You don't have to try to always talk people into the room. Meaning, you don't always have to convince people that you belong in the room. Right. Whether it's recruiting, whether it's NCAA tournament, whatever it is, you be what we've just had to for a number of years. Say, hey, BYU is the best place in the world to come and play even though we aren't in a Power 5 conference. Right. Now you can just say BYU is the best place in the world to come and play <laughs> and compete and put a period behind it. Right. We're in the game. We're in one of the best conferences. You're in the conversation at all times. Your teams are in the conversation at all times. We have to make a mindset change. We've been competing in a league where if you lose a couple of conference games in most sports, your season might be over as far as getting into the NCAA tournament. Right. In some of the sports. And now all of a sudden you're going into a conference where West Virginia last year in men's basketball started out the conference schedule 0 and 5. They lost their first five conference games. They were in the NCAA tournament. And you just have to change your mindset. You're going to have to, we're going to have to be much more resilient. We're going to have to be much, much tougher mentally. And we're going to have to be able to bounce back. We're going to have to have consistent behavior because we're going to get beat. But getting beat, hopefully, is just going to make us better, not derail us. And that's the mindset change. So that's the exciting part is you're in the game at all times and all places, and every game is meaningful because one game in most sports, you can play yourself right back into the NCAA tournament. I think it'll definitely be a journey, journey, and we're all here for it. I love it. We're here with BYU's Deputy Let's Athletic go. Director, Brian Santiago. Brian, you are incredible for taking the time. I know you're a very busy man, so thank you so much for coming on, and, and go Cougs, as always. Lauren, love talking to you, and 
go Cougs. We're super excited for Cougar Nation and all of our student athletes and players to experience this, this Big 12 ride. Thanks so much, Brian. And that does it for us today. Thanks again to David Almadova and Brian Santiago for coming on the show. You can join the Cougar Tailgate wherever you get your podcasts on Apple, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYUradio.org. Cougar Tailgate is a production of BYU Radio.